Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, it's your boy Dion Odom, we're back with another video. Today we're watching Boxing boxing Legend TV, the darkest secret in boxing history. So what that mean? Like, like what's this biggest secret? I want to know, I want to know. So let's get into it, let's get into it. To all my young fans out there, I'd ask that you no longer Ooh, see me as a role yeah. model, but see me as an individual that had the opportunity to be a role model and blew it and blew it. Did I watched this documentary. I think I watched that documentary on Netflix. I forgot what the documentary was called. What is his name? Uh, what is his nigga's name? Meet Tommy Morrison, yep. the most popular kid in school. Captain of every sports team he entered, adored by hundreds of friends and especially the females. A big talker. He's not all show. He's really, like, I mean, even he looks, he even looks like the guy next door. Although he was only in his mid teens, he was already a famous face in his small county of Delaware. His father, Tim, was a boxer, just like his father before him and just like his old man before him. In fact, the Morrison name is one that has been recognized in the local area for close to 100 years. He's too strong, eh? He's a very good man. And all the Morrisons, I know everybody, you know, and they're just too strong, too big, eh? Known for their charming looks and muscular physique, they used their natural builds to compete in damn near every tough man boxing contest in Southern America. And young Tommy was no exception. The only difference between Tommy and his forefathers was, in these clips you're looking at, he's only 13 years old. And while many years below the legal limit to fight, he was so incredibly advanced for his age, he forged a fake ID just to compete. And, quite frankly, went on to destroy men that were twice his age. All I do is box. I go to, I go to bed thinking about it, and I wake up thinking about it. Outside of his athletic ability, Tommy was also a bright pupil and was left in a predicament once graduation approached. He had the choice of pursuing an academic career or following in his father's footsteps as a boxer. A hard decision to make for many, but an easy one for Tommy. I'm Tommy the Duke Morrison, a heavyweight with 24 knockouts, and I'm going to the top. Rise of the Duke. During the mid to late 80s, boxing had entered a golden age. Mike Tyson was the most feared man on the planet. Yes, Elite contenders were starting to rise in Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. The Rocky movies had taken the film world by storm, and everyone and their grandmother had a poster of Sylvester Stallone on their bedroom wall. Truly an incredible time for the fighting art. Want to ring the bell? All right. Ding, ding. We're underway. And the pace is up-tempo right at the opening bell. And behind every great professional is a great amateur. And while Tyson was obliterating top contenders in the pro ranks, a socky white kid with a mullet was doing a similar job with the head guards on. Well, it's simple. Oh, man. I was just going to say, it's simple. He hit you with the left hook, you're gone. From 1985 to 1988, Tommy had amassed a huge record of 290 wins with 21 losses and a staggering 263 knockouts. An outrageous puncher's record, and while most were against other local fighters in the Delaware area, he did eventually make his way to the big leagues when he competed in the Seoul Olympic Trials, infamously losing a narrow decision to rising star and later rival merciless Ray Mercer, who ended up proving himself as the cream of the crop as he captured the gold medal just a few months later. Well, the way things are going right now, it's hard telling who's going to be the next heavyweight champion in the world, but I tell you what, I will be a heavyweight champion as well, so boxing fans, watch okay. out. Despite having a large fan base before his pro career had even begun, Tommy remained grounded with an attitude to gradually fight his way to the top. My main goal in life is to be able to take care of my parents. You know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here to start with. He made his debut on a small hall event in New York, scoring a first round knockout. And from here on, it was very clear that Tommy was a special power puncher, particularly with a left hook, as he was known for being able to close the distance in an instant with a fast leaping left hand. Curry at 227 pounds. Oh, oh, okay. Damn. It wasn't long before ESPN came knocking at the door. I ain't gonna lie, if a nigga got me, if somebody knocked me out, if I was boxing, and somebody knocked me out, and I'm bouncing off the ropes like that, I'm retiring that day. I'm done. Sure, this is the first pro fight. I'm done. Ain't nobody about to just have me bouncing off the ropes like that, son. Nah door asking for Tommy to feature on Tuesday Night Fights, a great platform for any young fighter looking to build a fan base while still taking on slightly lower journeymen in their division. That's going to make me uh, basically a household name, that's going to make people take me 
as a real fighter. Of course, Morrison jumped at the chance and was soon matched up with the 1986 Jesse Shelby Paul. on August 22nd, 1989. This is kind of a crossroads fight for Jesse Shelby. Good man on the ropes here, getting the best of it. Jesse Shelby in trouble. Yes, early. He lost to the Olympic trials. A big right hand followed up on the left by Morrison and Shelby. I don't think he's going to let it go on, no. And Tommy Morrison remains unbeaten. Yeah, the guy seemed like I was just a step off, you know, the first uh, part through the first round and second round. But once I got adjusted to it, I think things, uh, things went my way. I'd like to thank uh, ESPN and Top Rank for having me here. Okay, a quick report card from Bill Caton after 15 fights. What do you see, Bill? I think Tommy is on his way. He's still learning, but he's improving from fight to fight. Soon after the bout, Frank Stallone recalled his brother Sylvester was looking for a young, muscular athlete to play the character Tommy Gunn in the latest upcoming Rocky movie. Yes, early. <laughs> he lost to the Olympic trials. A big right hand followed up on the left. After witnessing Morrison on Tuesday night fights, he quickly informed his brother that this young power puncher from Oklahoma might just be the guy he's looking for. A movie producer heard That's about crazy. Tommy and decided that since his grand uncle was John Wayne, that acting as well as fighting was in his blood. Less than a week later, they had already begun filming. Yes. Despite the movie arguably being the worst in the series, Tommy received praise from many critics due to the fact he had never acted in any sort of capacity beforehand and did a relatively good job in bringing Tommy Gunn to life. Okay, so which will it be? Will you go for the acting career or will you go for the heavyweight championship? Well, I'm going to get the heavyweight championship first and then, uh, then we'll, 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 we'll work on the other. However, acting wasn't Tommy's forte. He was a boxer. And now, with a brand new younger fan base, he couldn't wait to get back in the ring and continue his road to the title. There's a big left to knocking you out. I got a job to do and I plan on uh, doing it quickly. And now with a crushing blow. Tommy has a hell of a left hook. He's got a great left hook, period, end of paragraph. Fight after fight, knockout after knockout, the now 22-year-old Morrison couldn't put a foot wrong. He blasted out many of the same faces Mike Tyson did a couple years prior. The former world champion Pinklin Thomas couldn't make it past one round. The tricky slickster James Quick Tillis met the same fate a month prior. Steve Zowski, Lorenzo Boyd, and David Jacko were others Tyson faced and Tommy had steamrolled. <laughs> There's a left hand, Jake goes down and probably out. The big fight was on the tip of everyone's tongue. Tommy Morrison versus Mike Tyson. Now boxing big shot, Bill Cates is grueling Tommy for a shot at heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. And it could be the grudge match of the century. The style clash was undoubtedly going to gel well for the fans. Both were undefeated and both were big knockout punchers. And it certainly wasn't an idea Tommy was shying away from. A lot of people are pretty satisfied with saying, hey, you know, I fought for yeah, it. could have been a piece of We don't want to fight on. for it. We want to fight for it and win it. He's there when I get there, well then they'll have to be removed. Just before the Morrison and Tyson fight came into fruition, Buster Douglas shocked the world with a historic upset over the seemingly unbeatable Tyson. Landing these all oh, days up again by Buster Douglas. Look at this. He's not Mike Tyson down. He doesn't get to make it. They hold Tyson Almost 30 years has passed since that night in Tokyo, and still to this day, it's regarded as the biggest upset, not just in boxing, but in world sports history. Uh, boxing, you never know what to expect. I mean, uh, and if you don't believe me, you can ask Mike Tyson. <laughs> a few months later, Tommy entered the most significant bout of his career, repeat a revenge, Morrison versus Mercer 2. On the line, the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. Ray, I'm ready. Three years on from their clash in the Olympic trials, Tommy had a chance to set things straight as he matched up in a widely speculated 50-50 showdown with now 17-0 professional Ray Mercer. No Mercer. Mercer had shown a lot in the way of promise himself during the build-up to this contest. Not quite the flashy power puncher like Morrison, but a rough and tough resilient brawler nevertheless. It could end in this round. It's over, Al. It's over, Al. It's over. And there's the big one. That was the one to put him to sleep. And that's and the one, one more. Oh. Back to the Tommy Morrison belongs in boxing. Let's Ray see, Mercer is the WBO back, so get back. heavyweight champion. Careful early. Tommy starts very fast. He has a lot to prove, and he'll try to do that in a quick Ray fashion. Mercer. Ray Mercer that's defending his title. Damn, Tommy, that is a big Neither a defensive whiz, so you know there will be openings. Big Morrison out of it. Get that the referee set. Oh, big shot. Morrison. What? 
great chin. You have to make him quit. And so far, it has been Morrison big in the first two rounds. Morrison was in the greatest shape of his career. The timing and speed of his combos during the first two rounds were breathtaking. Mercer was known for having a chin of iron, but to walk through the onslaught of Tommy shots the way he did elevated everyone's respect. Right on it. Third round, Morrison teeing off on Mercer. Take so many shots. And now Mercer puts a couple of rights together. Remember, he left Morrison with a right hand as a gift to end the third round. By the end of the fourth round, Tommy's mouth was wide open. Struggling to breathe, his game plan was obviously to blast Mercer out inside three, and in retrospect, it was a huge oversight considering the strength he possessed. Mercer made it pay for it. As in his 27. Mercer pounding away. Morrison may be going. Morrison is gone. He's a better fighter, man. Here he is just connecting with shots, unanswered punches, out on his feet and hurt. Mm. Is Tommy the Damn. new Morrison? I would retire. A lot of shots from Merciless Ray Mercer. Mercer. The loss was a tough one to swallow, and Tommy went from the hottest prospect in world boxing to a man with a gray and bleak future. After all, if he couldn't beat Ray Mercer, the weakest regarded champion in the division, how on earth could he compete with the legs of Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson? After the Mercer fight, I took about probably three months off. Stay. What makes somebody the weakest champion? Like, that's crazy. Champion's a champion, like, you know what I'm saying? He got the dub completely away from the gym, kind of did a little bit of soul searching. Perhaps the old cliche of the Great White Hope would surround Tommy's name from here on out. But then, over the next few months, a surprising revelation surfaced. We had friends at the bars at Westport they call us up at midnight, one o'clock, and say, hey, you better come and get your boy. He's laid past down on the floor. You might want to come and get him before the media gets here. So we run down and pick him up and throw him in the back of a pickup truck and carry him home. Tommy surrounded himself with the wrong people. He was already deep into a vicious cycle of heavy drinking, drug taking, and by all accounts of the people close to him, nymphomania. Tommy was a constant womanizer. He was such a natural athlete that even after years of self-abuse, the lifestyle never appeared to catch up to him in the ring, by the untrained eye at least. However, this guy didn't have supernatural powers. The partying was later revealed to be far worse than first thought. This wasn't just a weekend binge situation. This was an every night thing. I never was thought of as a bully. I was always a man liked by everybody. And I, oh, I like to be liked by everybody. I'm uh, willing to get along with anybody who wants to get along with me. Despite Tommy losing that reputation as a role model that he once loved to embrace, the partying went on like before. Only this time, he was consistently fighting at a higher level in between. So bouts that he would easily win as a sober man became just that bit harder. And Tommy Morrison summons some power today, and it saves him in the ninth round. I think I learned a lot from this. Joe Hip is one of, one of the hardest punches I've ever fought. I look at it as a plus. You know, I got, I got hit a little bit too much. Defense is something that we felt like we always had to work on, something that hasn't been a secret, so we're real happy about it. Well, you came through it, Tommy, with a late round knockout. Congratulations to you. Thanks very much for talking to us. He doesn't know where he is. Is that George Foreman? Williams has already busted up. And Mills Lane has stopped the fight. Another dramatic power punching comeback for Tommy Morrison. After defeating Carl The Truth Williams in January 1993, Tommy put himself in line for a lucrative title shot against the immovable object that is Big George Foreman. Probably didn't have the greatest training habits in the world, but uh, I've matured as an athlete, feel very comfortable with, with where I'm at, and I actually, this time, I feel like I belong here. Yeah, he's uh, probably all the things he's got going for him, you know, better for him. And then I've got a few things going for me, m mostly 256 pounds. <laughs> I'm going to use those pounds, too. Foreman was midway through his comeback after 10 years away from the sport. He obviously wasn't considered to be the threat he was in the mid-70s. Still, there was no denying the big man could take an almighty punch. Well, his arms do seem to be getting a little heavy. Oh, oh Tommy Morrison on an engine. Staggered. Holyfield has staggered for him. And as his recent outings suggest, deliver one at its highest order as well. This guy can punch. Man, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna let no nigga come out of retirement with my eyes. Ain't, ain't on cave is George Foreman or not, nigga. That's crazy. 
hey, 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 hey. If a person that good, it don't matter what age, I guess. He's got a lot of experience, he's got a lot of weight, and he's got a, uh, a lot of age. And I've got to try to counterbalance that with youth, speed, and athletic ability. Despite Big George being the 7-5 betting favorite, June 7, 1996 became the glowing highlight of Morrison's career. From the opening round, he made the older man look ancient as he carefully maneuvered around the ring, evading the slow but dangerous attacks. His defensive prowess complemented his razor-sharp combination counters as he never gave Foreman a millisecond to recuperate from his errors. Mm. Morrison breathing with his mouth open as we begin <laughs> round. <laughs> Damage, there it is again, and tremendous left hook by Tommy Morrison. Mm. Low blow from Foreman, and a good left hook by Morrison. Two good left hooks by Tommy Morrison, and George didn't move. You know, is it me? Every time I like watch boxing, the hits don't even look that crazy or hard, but I know they are, like, quick hard like when you watch it on TV or watch like a clip or something it don't even look crazy like damn what the fuck how you get knocked out like that but I know that shit probably hurt like a motherfucker big right hand from Morrison and a left hand that's a little better a right hand Ooh. behind the left hook right is over here and begin July hook by Tommy Morrison combination He's calling time again. Right. And the bell sounds, ending the fight. I thought Tommy Morrison fought a very intelligent fight, stuck with his plan, and I think he uh, deserves full credit for a victory I expect he's going to get. Jerry Roth scores the belt, 118 to 109, for the winner and new champion, Tommy the Duke Morrison. Once Morrison became world champion, notable changes in his appearance and performance became apparent to all. Within just an 18-month period, he appeared to age by five or six years, slightly losing his boyish looks and muscular physique along the way. He also no longer possessed those fast twitch muscle fibers from before. The power remained, but Tommy relied on his speed just as much as his strength, which inevitably resulted in some shocking losses and one-sided beatdowns. Despite the poor run of form, promotional superstar Don King stepped in and offered Morrison a life-changing retirement package. Three fights, $10 million with a guarantee of a Mike Tyson showdown to end it all. A very lucky out, to put it lightly. Don King accepts the contract. We're ready to have the warm-up. Arthur Stormy Weathers was the first man penciled in for Tommy, a low-level journeyman with little to no chance in causing an upset. Nothing more than a tune-up to get the ball rolling for Morrison's comeback. Well, but in the days leading up to the bout, an unusual headline surfaced. Tommy Morrison was supposed to fight tonight in Las Vegas, but the Duke oh, was KO'd by the Nevada it. Athletic like, Commission just hours tired. before his scheduled bout with Arthur Weathers. Morrison suspended worldwide for medical reasons. Tommy's reasons for avoiding the blood test just didn't make sense. He claimed he was scared of needles, but every boxer knows that excuse simply won't be enough to avoid such a key and important part of the sport. Take your freaking blood test. Well, you told me not to do anything unless you were here. You know, Don wanted me to do it. I said, Tommy, take your blood test. That's for the commission. Morrison had no choice but to take the test or be stripped of his license. And for his love of the game and faith in God, he took the test, knowing full well the results could end his career and perhaps even his livelihood. Yeah. I've taken the action to have a more extensive test run. And I was informed just a little while ago that uh, those tests do in fact confirm that I have tested positive for the HIV virus. Yeah. Morrison was subsequently suspended from the sport. Having the HIV virus in any sort of combat sport runs a huge risk of transmission. Blood and saliva often trade places during a bout and the Nevada State Athletic Commission made the right decision in instantly revoking his license. But was it something that they should have done sooner? Perhaps seven years sooner to be more precise, dating right back to the days and months in which he first turned professional. 
And then it announced that he could not pass these physical, and I knew what it was. We had talked about this before. Talked about what? The HIV. He knew before? He suspicioned. Morrison's own mother admitted that Tommy knew to some degree he had the virus long before failing the test in 1996. And in 2016, court papers were released suggesting Tommy had been diagnosed HIV positive all the way back in 1989. When Morrison's ex-wife, Don Brady, was questioned for the upcoming lawsuit in a sworn deposition, she said that he had told her in 2000 that he tested positive for HIV in 1989 when he got checked out as part of a screening for a life insurance policy. Morrison confirmed this himself when he went into rehab in 1999, and the counselor doing his intake wrote that he claims that he was first told he was HIV positive in 1989. We do have to add that the claims made are alleged, but the amount of evidence to suggest he was hiding the virus for many years is overwhelming. That's crazy. Once Morrison contracted the virus, his whole life changed. The town, where he was once known as a hero, turned their back on him. Most of his close friends never even bothered to offer some sort of sympathy. He was alone and scared. My first reaction was, what are people going to think? You know, I mean, uh, here I am, a supposed to be a big, tough guy. And, uh, and I think I walked around in life thinking that I was bulletproof. And now I got to pay the ultimate price. Shortly after his public press conference, Lakers legend and five-time NBA champion Magic Johnson contacted Morrison to try and help him through this hard time and offered him some valuable advice. Johnson, as I'm sure many of you are aware, contracted the virus himself just a few years prior to this incident, and had since become a main advocate in spreading awareness of the deadly virus. I would now become a, a spokesman for the HIV virus. Morrison quickly teamed up with the former basketball star, where together they toured the country sharing their stories with as many ears and eyes as they could reach. Initially, their recovery went great. Tommy had a lead HIV specialist doctor nursing his health. He took his pills regularly and began transforming his broken and weak body back to full fitness. That was until he met his soon-to-be wife, Trisha in the late 2000s. He couldn't talk to people. His wife wouldn't let anybody near him. Tommy had convinced himself and others around him that he didn't just no longer have AIDS, but he never had the virus in the first place. The former champ gave up his prescribed medicine for marijuana and other street drugs, such as cocaine and methamphetamine. In doing so, his health rapidly deteriorated, and by the summer of 2010, he was barely recognizable. In this picture, he was just 40 years old. Damn. After a string of health complications over the next couple of years, Morrison finally passed away on September 1st, 2013, due to multiple organ failure and a cardiac arrest. He was only 44 years old. Young, still pretty young. Look, dang, look old as fuck, dude. There are still so many unanswered questions surrounding Tommy's life and death. Like, when did he contract the virus? How did he contract the virus? Why did he give up on recovery? Sadly, it seems unlikely that we'll ever definitively know the answers. I do think it's worth pointing out that after a lot of research, I was unable to find a story of a Morrison lover or ring sharer who ever contracted the virus as a direct result of himself. His three ex-wives and two sons all live healthy lives to this day, with Trey and Kenzie both following in their father's footsteps as professional boxers. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And for those of you That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Hey, man, the HIV gets you, man. He has some potential. He has potential to be a great boxer, but you know, and, you know, he just I don't think he took it as serious as he should because as he should have. You know what I'm saying? Because. I mean, he's still getting dubs on pretty, you know, known names and stuff like that, but, you know, but, you know, hey. Anyway, you like my reaction, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.